you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. So she told me that twins are like the human version of buy one, get one free. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you made it. Glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your hosts, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Kobe. And what are we going to be talking about today, Nuria? Oh, today is a good topic again. It's um, done is better than perfect. Yeah. Um, th yeah, that's that one so rings true for me, um, you know, specifically with my books, uh, you know, wanting to wait until it's perfect. You know, you know, trying to get that that last, you know, one more run through of editing, one more whatever, and uh, it's, but but it's beyond writing, you know, even beyond books. So if you're not an author, you know, you don't have to to turn this off because um, just in business in general, I, I find that, um, you know, when you're first starting a business, it, it before you open those doors, either virtually or realistic, you know, in real life, that it's. Um, it, it's just your money's going out, no money's coming in. Yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes you need to just, you know, you know, maybe the sign isn't exactly perfect or, you know, maybe the menu is not exactly, you know, you know, there, there's still a few tweaks that you need to make. Sometimes you need to just open those doors and, and start um, because your customers are going to give you the best feedback you can get. You know, you can, you can try to ask, friends and family, and, you know, they'll give you a little bit of their honest opinion, but they're also your friends and your family. And so they're going to, you know, not maybe not be as brutally honest as a perfect stranger would be. But um, so I, I think while, you know, we, you know, we, we both come from, uh, you know, the, the writing background and, and publishing books, um, it goes beyond that as far as the, you know, done is better than perfect. Absolutely beyond that. And it's, um, it's a quote, I think I looked it up because I, I use it so often. And I'm thinking, where does that even come from? Done is better than perfect. It's a quote by Sheryl Sandberg. I don't really know who she is. And my apologies for that. But uh, <laughs> that's what I read. And I say this so often, done is better than perfect, because to me, it's about taking action, yep. you know, and I see so many people that are not starting something because they want it to be perfect. They want everything to be in place. And the way or the thing that comes into my mind in, into my mind the most when I think of that quote is when I started blogging and just finding the name for the blog, it was it was like climbing a, a high mountain. I just couldn't for the life of me think of a good name and uh, in the end I thought oh, I'm just going to call it something and be done <laughs> and that's right. it and that's what I did and and actually sometimes it's not about finding the perfect thing it's about then making it perfect or you know there's so many things that you can do once you start but you have to start and that is why I keep saying done is better than perfect because you can always improve things later you know you you have to start the only other thing that somebody I think when I when I wrote this in my Facebook page one day, somebody misunderstood it and they said, but you keep saying uh, quality before yeah. quantity, quality is important. Yes. And I think, yeah, I can see why they thought uh, maybe she's saying that do it without thinking too much of the quality. Right. That's not what that quote is about. It's about taking action, but it can be imperfect action. It can be just getting started that's what it's about really yeah. rather than saying it's not about quality of course it is <laughs> right no qual quality regardless of what you're doing is is what's going to um make your business better you know um just putting out hot garbage that's what you're going to get back um yeah. but but i have found that in many many times perfection can be paralyzing you know mm. um getting to the you know i i didn't know where that quote came from uh done is better than perfect i, I heard it one time and just kind of it, it just really resonated with me so i just latched onto it so it's good to know where it actually came from um <laughs> but uh but yeah it just um you know it's you still want to put the quality in but it's usually that that last one percent you know that you know that last 
foot, you know, that, that you need to get in the race that, that people just kind of trip over, you know, and, and they, they keep kind of pushing things off because it's not just there. And, and the thing is, is like I said, you know, many times, well, kind of what you alluded to is, is that things can change. Well, things will change in business, you know, um, you know, whether it's a restaurant and your recipes change or your, you know, what you, what you carry changes based on, you know, the feedback you get from your customers, same thing for writing, you know, uh, you may go back and, and completely, you know, do a, a second edition of your book because of feedback that you've received, or you become a better writer from that feedback. So, uh, but again, if you don't, if you don't take that, that last step to actually start the business um, or start the blog or start the YouTube channel or whatever, then you're never going to really get any further. You know, you, you can only go so far on your own. You need to just exactly. kind of take that, that, you know, big step and, and, uh, and just go for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's only two ways you can go. You can either go for it or not do it. And done is better than perfect because not done doesn't take you anywhere. Right. <laughs> you know, not done is basically, that's it, end of the road. Whereas at least if you're doing it, even if it's not perfect, you can improve, you can learn from it. And I think that to me is the most valuable thing. You know, the, the fact that once you get started, you, you're learning as you're going along and that's only a good thing. I think, and also I think people who are not so much about perfection, they are more able to also take constructive criticism. You know, if you, right. if you want it to be too perfect, you I don't know whether that's true or not, but you tend to be a person that doesn't take criticism very well either because you think you are doing it perfectly now. Right. There's very few people, I think, that think of something um, that they've done is perfect. I think we all question ourselves. Mm -hmm. We all think that we could improve something. But I think, what, I mean, what do you think? Do you think there's, I've got a point? I do. And, and one thing to keep in mind is that if, if you if you don't take that last step, then right now you're just trying to make it perfect for you. You know, you you don't know if it's perfect for everybody else because you haven't given it to everybody else. So whether again, whether you're publishing something or you know an online business or a, you know a brick and mortar, you know if if you don't open those doors and get feedback from your paying customer, then there's no way it can be perfect. Because again, you're 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 looking at it from one perspective. As the creator of this business, you know it's not perfect yet. But again, perfect for you. I mean, like it, it's okay to fail, you know. But you can't even fail if you don't take that step. And I think that's one reason why people do try to to uh, wait until it's perfect to them is because of that fear of failure. Which we could do a whole other uh, episode on on fear of failure, but um. But again, you, you, your business can never grow until you learn from the paying customers what they're looking for, what they want. And, uh, and that's why done is better than perfect. I think you have just hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, who is it perfect for? <laughs> it's, you're, you're so right. That is, that's one of the things I'm going to take away from this podcast. <laughs> it's, you know, who is it perfect for? And we don't know, you know, who is right. perfect for unless we do it and unless we get that product out there or the book out there, whatever it is you're creating. And I think that that is one of the things that most people struggle with really is to make that initial to take that initial step, you know, I get lots of people saying, I would love to start an Etsy shop, but I'm not just, you know, I'm not quite sure how to do it. I'm not quite sure if my products are good enough. I'm not sure if my, if it's with books, you know, that uh -huh. I'm not sure my book is good enough. What's the worst that can happen? You know, that's the other thing that I keep saying. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is already happened. You know, that's not doing something and not putting your product out there. Um, most people say, when I say, what's the worst that can happen? They say, well, I'm frightened that I won't get any sales, you know, and then you th you think, well, but you're not getting any now because exactly started, you know, right. so the worst has already happened. It can only get better. <laughs> exactly. Leah, you're, you're not, you're not getting any business if you don't open those doors and, no. and, you know, and, but you're still, like I said, at the beginning of this uh, episode is, but you're, you're still paying for whatever you're paying for. 
That's you know, right. yeah. and so the the money's still going out, but no money's coming in. Yeah. And yeah. and while you can say, okay, but no money's coming in, whether I open the doors or not, but at least by not by opening the doors and and trying, you're getting feedback from people. You know, um, like you because right now you're you're just kind of um, at, at an impasse. You know, you're not failing because you haven't started yet. You know, you you haven't taken that step, and so you at least from failing, you learn, you know, you can learn, okay, so what, what didn't work? But again, if you don't take that step and, and open those doors, then you can't even learn from that. Yeah. And so it really, it really is, you know, paralyzing because you can't go any further until you just, you know, finally take that step. And, and again, not talking about jeopardizing quality, but, you know, if, if you've got it, you know, 90% there or 95% there, that's, I mean, that extra 5% isn't going to make or break it. Absolutely. You just dis- you described it perfectly just now, paralyzing. I think that is what it is. It's really paralyzing. The good thing about it is once you actually take that step, that initial step, and you start it and you get it done, it gets easier. Next time round, you won't feel as paralyzed. And, you know, it does get easier, I find. You find that as well? I do. And and just, just to make it clear, you know, I'm not just some talking head where I'm like telling you what to do and I've never done it. Um, you know, I, I mean, when it comes to publishing, it took me 17 years to publish my first children's book, you know, and, and it really was like, okay, well, what are you waiting for? You know? And at first it was, yeah, I was waiting for the right illustrator and I was waiting for this and that, but towards the end, you know, it was 95% done. And I'm like, okay, what are you waiting for? You've already edited it you know, five times and, and you've had, you know, an outside editor edit it and they said, it looks great. What are you waiting for? And it was like, okay, well, I don't know where to, you know, where to publish it. Should I traditionally publish? Should I self publish or whatever? And it, and it was at that point where I was like, just do it, you know, just, just self publish it. And, and I did, and it actually ended up getting picked up by a traditional publisher. So um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, I have definitely, fallen uh, a victim of and and it was paralyzing like i said for you know 17 years and um, but yeah you it does get better it does get easier i'm so glad you said that because i've never taken 17 years for, <laughs> for anything that is such a long time it is but it just shows you that it happens it happens to all of us and um you overcame it obviously and it's possible to to do that so i think that's really valuable for anybody listening you know that it took you 17 years because that shows you you know do you do you now wish you had done it earlier oh absolutely i absolutely wish i'd done it <laughs> done it earlier you know and yeah. you know in hindsight it's always 2020 but it's um definitely something that i wish i'd just you know kind of uh taken you know taken that step and and yeah. it, maybe had I heard the phrase, uh, done is better than perfect, before that, maybe I would have. Well, that's something that um, whoever's listening can take home, you know, that um, you're only going to wish you did it earlier <laughs> right. afterwards. Right. So you might and as well do it. Even even if it's not, a, you know, a raving success, you know, um, again, you can still learn from that. You can still tweak it. Um, you know, remember that, like with a recipe, you know, what you put out there the very first time doesn't have to be your end product. You know, you can, you can mold it and, you know, and, and grow as a business, as a product, but you can only do that when you start getting feedback from, from actual customers. And uh, not to mention, you know, you get actual customers, maybe some of that, the income that you've been putting out is starting to come back in, you know, because, uh, you know, realistically, you know, and I've done this in business where it's like, I, you know, I can only hemorrhage funds for so long to where it's like, you know, I need to just either put this aside and say, I'm not doing it at all, which is what happens a lot of times is people have these great ideas and, and they start putting all this stuff together. And then they're like 95% there. And then right when they get to that, um, you know, that finish line and open the doors, um, they talk themselves out of it, you know? And then it's like, well, you've just wasted all this without even knowing if it was going to be a success. You know, and I've said this in in previous episodes, but, you know, many of the times I've seen people succeed and I've seen people fail. The difference is just the people that failed quit too soon. You know, they didn't, you know, because you never know if if tomorrow's the day that 
that I'm going to make a change, that something's going to happen that's going to change the whole thing, turn the whole thing around for me. Yeah. it's. I mean, I can see why, because it's hard to work towards something, and if you're not seeing the result, mm -hmm. there does come a point when you think, should I give up? You know? yeah. and, and it's at that point you you haven't got a crystal ball to see what the future brings. So you give up when you feel it's right. right. It's the right time to give up. But you just never know whether you could have made it, you know, um, by waiting a little bit longer. It's a tricky one. It is. But yeah, but taking action is so important. I think, you know, that is... I've said it so often, done is better than perfect in the last few weeks. It's just like a synchronicity that we've got this podcast <laughs> now, or maybe a coincidence, or maybe I've just come across a lot of people that are stuck and that don't know how to how to take that first step. But I think it's just about taking the plunge and doing it. You know, there's no formula, no, nothing that, because every situation is different as well. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what advice I would have for anybody other than saying done is better than perfect. Just get it done. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's, and it, it's, it's okay. You know, just to make it clear, it, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to, yeah. you know, to feel like, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to put out something that's not perfect. I don't want to put out something that's mm -hmm. low quality. And, and like we said earlier, you know, we're not talking about jeopardizing quality, mm -hmm. but you know, if something's 95% done or 99% done, that's almost perfect. You know, when you know, is, I mean, you just have to sit there and realistically ask yourself, is there really anything more that I can do yeah. that to make it better, substantially better than, you know, what I, what I currently have? Um, yeah. Not do you think it can be better, but do you know for a fact that there's something that you can do? That could be, you know, because if you can take an actionable step to make something better, then yeah, go for it. But if it's one of those things that it's just, it's just a reason to procrastinate and a reason to just put it off, that's when you're saying, okay, that's when it's time to just, you know, to just, you know, take, take that leap of faith and, and jump in and do it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I've, I've known people that, that have just, I mean, I've known people who've, you know, writing books and if take, it's taken them, you know, 20 years to write this, you know, write their book. And I'm like, you know, I mean, is it an epic novel? Like what, what's taking you so long, you know, and I understand life gets in the way and things like that. But, but when you're talking about business and, and something that you want to do and you have a passion for, and you want to, you know, you know, as they say, fire your boss and, and do this, you know, all, all on your own, the only way you can do that is to open those doors and to, you know, to take that step and, you know, and, you know, again, it might not be 100% perfect, but you know what, even if it's 95% perfect to you, it could be 100% perfect to your customers. You know, getting back to what I was saying before is, you know, exactly. until you get, until you get paying customers feedback, the perfection you're searching for is your own. Yeah, so true. And also you find sometimes when people are um, sort of, um, putting things off and they're waiting and they, they want it to be perfect and sometimes they show me what they've produced and I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm thinking this is really good you know what what's stopping you oh I'm not sure you know and this is what you were saying you know who who is it perfect for most people won't even notice most people won't notice whether it's um perfect or not because their idea of perfection is different to yours so right you know and and I find that so sad that people stop themselves from doing something. They could have published a book a year ago because it was ready all this time, or they, mm -hmm. you know, and they haven't done so. And then when I looked at it, I thought, well, to me it looks great, you know. To them it didn't. So <laughs> that's the only thing that stopped them. And uh, it's what you said, you know, who is it perfect for? That that is such a good point. And the other thing to keep in mind is um, you're never going to make everybody happy. You know, we we kind of we kind of talked about this before we started uh, recording this episode. Um, but you're never going to make everybody happy, and so uh, that it's not going to be perfect for everyone. But Absolutely. if it's but it, there's a really good chance it's going to be perfect or, or close to perfect for somebody else. And again, you know, they can they can help as your business grows. 
you know, that feedback will help you make that product perfect or as close to perfect as possible for your paying customers. And that's, you know, when it comes to business, that's the important part. You know, if you continue to make, try to make it perfect for you, you could be taking it completely away from where your customer wants it to be. You know, um, you know, you can be making like, you know, if we, if we talk about, you know, iPhones for a while, they were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, uh, and now they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, it's like, you know, the customers are, you know, they, you know, the company thinks, oh, well, people want things smaller, but the customers are saying something else. And so, you know, there, those are things that, that you can only again, learn if you take that step and you, you get that feedback from your paying customers. Absolutely. And you find your customers as well, mm-hmm. you know, your, and all your customers find you. So right. there will be people who don't like your products or they don't like you or whatever it is, but they're not your customers. You know, you, right. you have your group of people. So don't worry about them. Worry about the people that you are trying to attract and that you're trying to or that like you and want to buy your products, you know. So you can't make it perfect for everyone anyway. So, you know. I think it's what you said, you know, you have to put it out there and then see what feedback you're getting and and then listen to that feedback and right. it better that way. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and again, another episode we can talk about, you know, dealing with feedback, positive and negative, but because um, I mean, I could do a whole nother episode on that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really just comes down to, you know, as we as we said in the in the title, done is better than perfect. Well, this has been another great mastermind, Nuria, and a big thank you to each and every one of the listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, it would mean the world to us if you follow or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite listening platform. And while you're at it, go on and leave us a review. I know we have a really great topic next week. I'm really excited about it. It will be a great topic. Yes, it should. And until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Kobe. Thanks for joining the Mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.